Lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On this week's show, we're talking spring fishing. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Tony Roach. You know, Tony, it's kind of a unique spring. Uh, we have fishing opener for walleye this weekend coming up in Minnesota, and we had a late ice. And in your experience over the years, you know, what would you be focusing on right now? Well, I love late springs, you know, when that water temperature is a little colder, those fish are cramped, jam-packed into that shallower water, just crammed in there feeding on bait fish, they're seeking out warm water in particular, you know, you're not just catching walleyes, you're catching bass, you're catching panfish, you're catching pike. Uh, I also look for current areas. Current areas are a great spot, especially when you get these later ice out years. Uh, current just draws those fish in. If they, it draws the bait, it draws the warm water, and they're jammed in there. Yeah, current, current is definitely a conveyor belt basically of food for them. Right now, let's take a closer look at spring fishing. Spring is a time of new beginnings, both for fish and fishermen. Following winter slumber, the entire food web comes to life again as the days get longer and the waters warm. Pike, panfish, walleye, and bass push into shallow waters where the buffet has finally opened and the biological urge to spawn has also kicked in. This is all good news for anglers, as access to many fish species becomes easier than any other time of the year, and it doesn't take a big boat to get into the action. Look at that, beautiful fish. The northern pike are one of the first fish to move shallow in spring often before the ice has left the main lake. It's quite a sight, male and female pike migrating up narrow creeks, fully armed to feed and breed. And you've got a shot at a giant pike in spring, whether fishing dead bait on the bottom or chunking and winding swim baits or blades. Not long after the pike procession, the panfish convention comes to town, presenting some of the best bluegill and crappie action of the entire year. And while easy pickings panfish used to mean buckets of meat, more anglers are releasing larger fish and practicing selective harvest. And that's good news for the long-term sustainability of panfish waters in our region. See, dude. Oh yeah, good looking fish. Just smack that bait. Walleye fishing can also get fast and furious. Jigging live bait or plastics is a springtime staple. But don't overlook pitching or trolling cranks to find walleye in transition. There's no wrong way to fish them. And bass? Oh, there's another. Oh, that's a big gal From there, big boy. green fish to scrappy smallmouth, the getting can get great with fish localized in skinny waters. From power fishing to finesse, there are countless ways to catch springtime bass depending on their mood. I like when they, they bite on that frog. Best to have a few rods on the deck. From swim jigs to shallow running cranks to creature baits and wacky rigs, it all adds up to a whole lot of fun. But no matter what your favorite species, now is the time for some of the year's best angling opportunities. Well, this has been an interesting spring for sure. Definitely cold, you know, going into April. In Minnesota here, like we mentioned, we have the walleye opener coming up this weekend. What suggestions might you have, you know, even beyond walleye for this kind of cold spring? Uh, you know, fishing shallow and fishing quiet. I think, you know, with this colder spring that we're having, you know, you get into situations where there's not a lot of vegetation, you've got lots of species that are jam-packed into these shallow water areas, and really pitching baits and casting is going to be the key. Getting that presentation out away from the boat is, is definitely key because these fish are really spooky. When they're not clinging to any sort of cover, uh, they're going to be spooky. Even sometimes your presentations can spook these fish. So keep that in mind. You're going to want to go in there with your trolling motor down, staying quiet, and looking for water temperature. Water temperature can be the biggest factor factor in catching fish this time of year, bar none. And sometimes that means it's just a feeder creek with some warm water coming in. It could be, you know, just a little bit of wind blowing into a back bay, pushing up that water temperature up one or two degrees. Watching that water temperature gauge on your graph is going to be the greatest tool that you have this early, late ice spring and this early, early cool water spring. Yeah, some great information for sure. Hey, after this short break, we have our highlight destination feature and the first of our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues.
sportsmen. We're truck people. We're gear people. We're Radco people. Top brands like Lear, Access, WeatherTech, Kurtz and more. Price match guarantee. Exceptional service. Professional installation. Researched, tested, approved. Radco, when your truck looks good, you look good. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Welcome back to Angling Buzz TV. Right now it's time for a highlight destination. We're heading to Leech Lake. Leech Lake is a big fish factory for a number of different species. Last summer got on some nice musky fishing there. But besides musky, there's a lot of different fish to target. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I love fishing walleye shallow. Leech Lake is so diverse in its species. What's cool is when you're pitching for shallow water walleyes, inevitably you're catching giant pike, yeah. smallmouth bass, muskies, you know. The opportunities are endless. And what's cool about Leech is it's so diverse in how it's set up. You know, that main lake has a lot of rocks, some islands. You can get into these back channels with rice and vegetation for largemouth, uh, muskies, bass, even huge panfish opportunities. So it's just a great all around destination. If you want to go to a spot that's not the same throughout the entire fishery and you have a lot of diversity, Leech Lake is one of those locations. Yeah, it's an amazing place for sure. Right now, let's head over to Leech Lake. Leech Lake is famous for being one of Minnesota's premier walleye destinations, but it has much more than just walleye to offer visiting anglers. Many people love to take advantage of the exceptional crappie and sunfish bite. Big black crappies can be found in the lake's many wild rice lined bays. What a beautiful fish. And if you're looking for perch, check out the main lake shallow sand grass flats. Most anglers concentrate their efforts in the five to 10 foot range. Come opener, the lake's relatively shallow flats, rocks and points are high probability spots offering plenty of eater walleyes and good numbers of larger fish too. For years, Leech Lake Walleye Angler's go-to presentation this time of year has been shiner minnows, either jigging or rigging. But increasingly, artificials have come into play. Jigs with three or four inch paddle tails or shallow running cranks produce lots of fish. If there's a good walleye chop this opener, make sure to try shallow. I mean really shallow. Hungry walleyes will often chase bait fish up in the reeds and shallow rock. We're talking less than five feet of water. Leech's sleeper bite is definitely its incredible largemouth bass action. And for fans of scrappy bronze backs, the catch rate has increased in recent years as the population seems to be expanding to new locations. Looking ahead to the Minnesota Muskie opener on June 2nd, it's hard to beat Leech for a shot at early season trophies. Yes, no matter your favorite species, Leech Lake has it all. Yes, Leech Lake does have it all. I go there primarily for the big muskies, but I can't help myself. I have to have a walleye rod. I have to have a bass rod just in case. Right, exactly, Troy. I mean, 
Leech Lake is definitely known for their big fish, you know, big walleyes, big muskies, big bass, but its secret are the panfish. You know, catching those monster perch, bluegills, and crappies are pretty much everywhere on the lake. You know, I like to go in these back channels, these backwater bay areas, even these lagoons hold fish all season long. And what's cool is when you catch them, they're big. You know, a lot of times when I get done guiding after I've been fishing walleyes all day, I love chasing panfish just because they're so monstrous. You can't get them anywhere else. Leech Lake holds those type of fish. You know, really, the first time that I laid eyes on a monster bluegill on Leech Lake, I was bass fishing. And lo and behold, I felt a hit and I thought it was a largemouth and I pull it out and it's a monster bluegill. Right there I was hooked. I knew Leech Lake was the destination for me when it comes to panfish. That's pretty cool. Uh, right now we're going to join Nick Linder with the first of our BuzzBite reports. You know, it sure is great finally having this warm weather up here in the North Country. And for our first report, we're going to go way up north to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Wow, what a difference a week has made up here. Our snow's just about all gone, the creeks, the rivers are running big time. The ice is pulling away from the shore out of the lake, so we're getting there. I just want everybody to be aware of the uh, pike regulations this year up here. The lake still has its own set of rules. It's a three fish limit under 24 inches. Everything between 24 and 36 has to go back and one over 36. On your area surrounding lakes and the rivers, you can keep only two pike up to 30 inches. Everything between 30 and 40 has to go back and one over 40. So just make sure you're aware of that regulation. The pike kind of get a bad rap. Nobody wants to deal with those Y bones. If you get a chance, go on Angling Buzz's homepage. There's a good video on Flay Northern Pike, no bones about it. It was a way I was taught many years ago to do it. That one's pretty fast, pretty quick, and before you know it, you have them ready for the frying pan. And for our next report, we're gonna head down south to Clear Lake, Iowa with Kevin Paul, where the walleyes have been biting. Um, right now, we got a really strong walleye bite. So the guys are casting slip bobbers, sipped with the minnow, fishing in uh, three to six feet of water. Look for uh, rocky reefs, Billy's Reef and the island and the outlet, stuff like that. Those have been key, key areas for the, for the walleye. So, one other thing I want to mention, casting crankbaits right now, rip stops, x wraps, that type of stuff, ripping it back, letting it stall out, has been awesome for the walleyes, guys. So, really, really important to try uh, casting those hard baits too. Um, one other thing I want to talk about is the pan fishing right now. Our crappie bite is off the hook today. Today we caught well over 50 crappies. We had our limited walleyes. It was a lot of fun. Uh, fishing shallow, fish the rushes, uh, small hair jigs, small plastics, um, stuff like that. So, come on down to Clear Lake. Bait and Tackle in Clear Lake, Iowa, and uh, check us out. We'll help you guys uh, catch more fish. Thanks, Kevin. Now stay tuned because we have more Buzz Bite reports to come as Angling Buzz continues. Some lodges are just a cut above. Hawk Lake is one of those. They're the only Orvis endorsed lodge in all of Ontario. And they're the four time finalists for the best Orvis lodge in all of North America. They feature cordon blue trained chefs and offer some of the best freshwater fishing in the world. You can target trophy walleye, smallmouth bass, pike and lake trout on any of their 19 private lakes. Whether you fish with traditional gear or love fly fishing, Hawk Lake has you covered. When you're paid to put fish in the boat, you don't mess around with the thing that puts fish in the boat. Always use the best line. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. 
According to Minnesota's Department of Natural Resources, in 2017, 97% of boaters surveyed by watercraft inspectors followed Minnesota's clean drain dispose laws. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now for our next report, we're gonna head over to Michigan with Captain Ben Wolf, where he's still fishing on the Detroit River. We're down here on the Detroit River, vertical jigging for walleyes. We have an absolutely incredible run. We're an estimating 52 million walleyes in Lake Erie, and probably about 10 million of those are expected to come up the river here to spawn. You know, vertical jigging is a great way to present jigs and baits to these walleyes. They're hugging right towards the bottom, anywhere from 15 to 20 feet for some of those bigger ones early and late in the day, and then sometimes 30, 38 feet for some of those more eater size, 15 to 18. We've got a great, incredible number of 15 to 18 inch walleye this year. And you know, we're getting lots of aggressive bites without tipping the jig with minnows. And one color that's been really good for us lately is the mahi-mahi color on an antifreeze color jig. That 30 inches of visibility is a perfect mix of just a little bit of stain and a little bit of clarity where they could see the jig, but not too well. And if you get out here on the Detroit River, we've got a wide open red hot bite. For our next report, we're gonna head over to Justin Geike in central Wisconsin and Green Bay. Two things to talk about today. Obviously trophy walleyes like this right here are one of them. But here we are, early May, and it's kind of an unusual year. So two things talking about walleyes, water temperatures are in the mid 40s in the central Wisconsin area, Wisconsin River, the Wassa area, and then again at Green Bay. That means post-spawn walleyes, we're using a couple of different things. We're using rip and wraps, jigging plastics, fished aggressively bounced out of the bottom, work really good. Yeah, from everything we've been hearing, the rip and wrap bite has been absolutely dynamite on Green Bay. And now for our next report, we're gonna head over to Leech Lake with Brian Brosdahl. Leech Lake is a popular lake for walleyes and this opener is gonna be great. Remember, we had a late ice, so find the shallower, warmer areas. Find the warmest water, you'll have the best bite. The walleyes just spawned, so we're gonna be seeking active fish. The females will dump off near the areas of spawn. Gravel, windswept points. The males will linger and provide most of the action and keeper fish, You'll find lots of lots of keeper fish, but also perch. RZ jig, watermelon's a hot color, parrot, uh, any kind of fire tiger pattern with a shiner, or you could use fathead or a leech. While you're at Leech Lake, try bobber fishing. If the bite is slower, uh, throw a bobber and let a, a leech sit and work its way uh, eight to 14 feet of water. And then go up in the weeds in the harbors and use firefly jigs from Northland Fishing Tackle for crappies and bluegills. Thanks, bro. Now we're gonna head over to the Alexandria region with Joe Segura for another walleye opener preview. Well, thanks to all that warm weather and some wind and some rain, we got a lot more open water around the area. Uh, so we should have a lot of options for walleye opener as well as panfish before then. So. I'm um, starting to see a lot of crappie fishermen from the roads. Um, those spots are just littered around the area and these uh, shallow bays come right up tight to the roads or where there's uh, water moving from lake to lake underneath the roads. Uh, there's going to be some great pan fishing this time of year and even for the weeks to come here. So um, if your walleye spots don't pan out here this following week, you always have a ton of spots for crappies. But uh, those crappies will come within a few yards of shore. Uh, really just need a jig and a minnow and a float and you can fish these areas and catch some beautiful fish um, and then as far as the walleyes go I'm just going to be concentrating shallow 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 and that's going to be on rock gravel or moving water shallow uh, with a jig and a minnow quarter ounce is all I'm going to need um, or even an eighth and a, and a jig and pull back through these shallow areas as well as a, a shallow diving crankbait uh, this time of year is just ideal. And now for another shore fishing bite we're going to head over to Lake Oahe with Chad Schilling where he's catching something that'll tug a little bit harder than a crappie. Not the walleyes we're normally showing, but you know, it's that time of year. The walleyes are really, they're spawning big time. Ice is just going off the main lake. The backs of these creeks are 40 to, between 40 and 45 degrees. I'm a quick let her go. The walleyes, I've actually been out four times this week, haven't caught a walleye. I have caught catfish, the action's good, and uh, that's all we're about. We're about having some fun and catching some fish. 
So we're just standing right here in Swan Creek today. Um, been busy, just got out, caught a few fish. Uh, the walleyes, like I said, are really tough. The pike are going, a few of them offshore, they're getting a few. Um, that bite isn't hot and heavy, but it's good enough to keep people, a lot of people giving it a try. So uh, there's guys up north of Pollock getting a few. Um, Lake Sharp, Lake Francis Case, there's a few going there, but it's coming soon. Thanks, Chad. Now stay tuned for cool products followed by Technique of the Week as Angling Buzz continues. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Now it's time for a cool product segment brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. We're gonna start out with a couple lures from Rapala, the original floater. This is tried and tested over the years for about everything that swims. You can cast this, troll this, put it on a three-way rig. For walleye, it's just a fantastic lure. And also from Rapala, the Husky Jerks. These are great for trolling, casting as well. And to get down a little bit deeper, you have the Down Deep Husky Jerk, great for trolling. And for line, a couple braided lines. Braid has really come on strong in the past few years. Here's one from Northland Tackle, the Bionic Walleye Braid, and the Suffix 832 line. And a couple jigs here for springtime. You know, we're talking panfish, fishing with these, pre-rigged, and then some trailers over here. We're gonna start out with VMC, the Spin Jig Curly Tail. And from Northland Tackle, the Thumper Crappie King, both have little small blades underneath it, really nice, adds a little bit of vibration as well. And then from Northland Tackle, we have the Impulse line and the Puddle Jumper line right here for panfish. These are great to put on the, the backs of small jigs. And over here, the Rip and Shad from Northland Tackle. Rattle baits are really nice for covering water. Obviously, they have a lot of vibration. They make a lot of sound so you can find fish. And right next to it right here, our Boomerang tool. This is really cool. It has a three-foot tether. You just attach this to your belt loop and it cuts your line. So if you're shore fishing, you're in the boat, you don't have to pick up scissors, mess with scissors. Really nice. It cuts braid, floral, monofilament. Fantastic from Boomerang Tool Company. And for live bait fishing, Northland Tackle obviously makes some fantastic jigs. These are the Fireball jigs. These have a nice short shank specifically for live bait and they have an eyelet on the bottom of them, and that's great for adding a stinger hook, you know, for detecting short bites when the fish just come up and nip the end of the, you know, if you're using a minnow, leech crawler, it's really great to pair as well. You can fish it with or without a stinger hook. The Fireball Jigs line from Northland Tackle. And an all-around rod for spring fishing and pretty much any time of year. You know, a medium action spinning rod is really tough to beat. This is from St. Croix, the Triumph. This is a 6'6", paired with a 
Daiwa Fuego LT2500. These are sold separately, but pair really nicely. You get the St. Croix quality. You also have great value as well in this. This is from St. Croix and Daiwa. All these products are available at your local Fleet Farm store. You can also get them online at fleetfarm.com. Right now we have our technique of the week. We're joining Tony Roach for some jig fishing tips. You know, when it comes to jig fishing, the baits I use are about as diverse as the bodies of water I fish. And one of my favorite go-to techniques is just pitching a swim bait. You know, I've got it on a swim head jig, a simple paddle tail like this, like the Northland Core Impulse Paddle Tails. They're just dynamite baits for pitching and ripping. And you can use these in a lot of different covers. Like today we're pitching weed lines where I'm just letting it hit the bottom and I'm ripping that bait back through the cover. I'm not letting it fall all the way down to the bottom, but I'm letting it fall enough in that cabbage where I can present that bait right. Simply because if you're fishing live bait, the more you rip, the more likely that bait's gonna fall down off the hook and give you an undesired presentation. Whereas with this plastic, you can snap through weeds, you can fish this a lot of different ways and the fish are a lot more aggressive. However, if you do need to slow down, I like to use shorter shank jigs or you know, something with a blade. Even these current cutter jigs work excellent with live bait. They've got a lot of live bait hook up there. And actually feeding the shiner onto the jig head and then working a little more slow, a little more methodical, whether you're fishing rock piles, uh, windblown points, uh, even dispersed cover where you're fishing that jig a lot slower along the bottom. That's where live bait shines is when you've got to slow down and fish slower. So make sure you've got plenty of different jigs in the boat with you. Uh, like I said, I like to use a lot of live bait jigs, but I also like to use a lot of plastics and make sure that you're using the right jig that fits the bait in which you're presenting. That's some great information. We want to thank Tony for joining us this week. Jig should be in any tackle box, no matter what you fish for. 100% Troy, could not agree more. And make sure to check in next week because we are going to be talking panfish mastery. And as always, we want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you leave any body of water, remember clean, drain, and dry. And don't forget to head on over to our website, anglingbuzz.com, for the latest in fishing information from our region. And you can also enter our sweepstakes for an awesome weekend on Leech Lake. Thank you for joining us. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Nick Linder, and we'll see you next week. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Roach. Ray Rosa. Lee Telkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Pavilion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bath like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week.